Hey guys, it's Dan here with my little drop into your feed for a weekly glimpse into my world and hopefully to share something with you that you will find useful and helpful. Uh, we had a lot of great response to the episode I did last week with Bruce Logan and so I'm going to share a bit more of that series that I did um, and this week I want to talk about the power of pre-visualization. You know, I think it, it serves as a great metaphor for business that when we make films, the clearer we have an idea of pre-visualizing what we want the final outcome to be, the better the final outcome always is because you have a plan, you have a roadmap. And in my coaching business, I'm always sharing pre-visualization of what you want your life to look like. But I thought it would be helpful to kind of go over a bit more of some of the things I've done in my career and draw some comparisons. And hopefully you'll find them to be helpful and useful. Um, because I think having context around the business coaching side of things we do now, but being able to kind of really share with you that I'm, I'm no different to you. I'm, I'm just a filmmaker who came up through the ranks telling stories, but I've always had this real sense of systemization, a real sense of planning, a real sense of pre-visualizing. I think the, the easier or uh, the more clearly you can define what you want the final outcome to be for a client, I think the easier it becomes for you to sell that to the client and ultimately get them excited about your idea and potentially you know, end up with a greater product or result. So in this episode, we're looking at the power of planning and pre-visualization. Now, if you love this content, I'd love you to subscribe, hit the bell, do all that good stuff. And at the end of the video, if you like it, please give us a thumbs up. Planning is the most important thing in filmmaking. And if you are a solo filmmaker, you might simply plan where you might go and film. As soon as you start adding people into equations, the more information needs to be distinguished as what is important and what is not, and who needs to have what information and by when. But planning starts before that, because if you're working with a client who is looking to pay you as a commercial venture, then the biggest obstacle that filmmakers have is they might have a creative idea, but when money is involved, the client needs to understand what your vision is for communicating that idea. And so it's very rare a client will just give you a budget and say, go and make the film. They want to see some kind of pre-visualization so that they can feel confident that the money they're going to invest in the project is going to give them the result they want. And we do this through pre-visualization and creating concepts so that we can guide the client down a pathway of understanding where we're going to go with a specific film. Now, in music videos, you can do this or drama with a storyboard. Now, storyboards are drawn frames that highlight what shot is going to be required at what point during the story. Storyboarding is a very powerful tool to help pre-visualize a film. The other thing you can do with a storyboard is create what's called an animatic. And an animatic is where you take a storyboard and you put a track of music or a piece of dialogue down on the timeline and editing, and then you simply drop still frames into that so you can create an example of what the film is going to look and feel like so that clients can get a sense of where the, the film is going. So with some films, you don't have time to do a storyboard or you don't necessarily have the resources available. And so a technique that I often use, and I've used this multiple times with big projects, is to grab images from the internet that get close to representing the direction you want to take a film. So in Timbirwa, which was the film I made just last year for the Sony a7S III, I knew the locations and I knew the basis of the story I wanted to tell. So I was able to go and research images on the internet that would build a, a rough storyboard which would allow the client to see a progression of where the story was going to go. And that helped enormously to convince them to go with my idea. Once you have a storyboard of sorts, 
created and written down, it allows you to then map out a shot list. Now that shot list becomes very important for understanding what shots you need to record to make the film work. So whenever we go into any project, we've mapped out the storyboard of some description, we've mapped out a shot list, and then a shooting order. In this example, you'll see a shot list from the FS5 launch film. Now this film was filmed over a three day period in Sydney in our winter, and we had very tight deadlines because of daylight. So you'll see that on each line, there's a specific shot in a specific location. We've identified the lens, we've identified how long it's going to take. So everything in filmmaking at this level is detailed and very, very carefully planned so we can execute. Another example where we did this very well was in the film we made in Istanbul, where again, we mapped everything out shot for shot. And in that situation, um, you know, we didn't have any footage of Istanbul that we could show because we were going to film there. So again, I just took images of different elements of markets and temples, rivers and boats would be a factor of life in Istanbul. And so we were able to map all of that out, create an overall brief for the client, and that was enough to get us to get the green light. The most important lesson with planning and creating pre-visualization content is that you want to try and communicate your vision to the stakeholders. And if you can do that on paper, it actually has the added benefit of giving you enormous clarity and enormous certainty on knowing you've got a film that's going to work on paper. And so when you know you've got a film that's going to work on paper, when you go out to capture that, you always get more, you always get extra, and you always end up with um, you know, a film that is better than you can possibly have imagined because you get there and you get up at 5 a.m. and you shoot a sunrise and suddenly there's this, this moment that happens on almost every sunrise as a, a 30 second or one minute avenue where a bird flies through the sun or something happens in the shot and you capture this magic. And those magical moments always end up becoming really beautiful moments in any film. So I really encourage you to spend the time working out what you wanna create on paper first, so that when you go to film, you can only add more on top and it's the icing on the cake.